and it uh, really warms our heart to praise and uh, sing, sing songs of praise to our King. Now we would like to uh, welcome our beloved uh, brother, Attorney Dennis Cortez, for the most awaited series of end times. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jante, uh, and I'm thankful once again that we are all here gathered via Zoom to worship the Lord and to study His Word. As we study His Word, I'd like to request for your prayers. Actually, I was not uh, feeling very well uh, last night, uh, but uh, praise the Lord uh, uh, through the loving care of my wife. As uh, God's instrument, I was able to feel uh, better and I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful, as I said, that we can have uh, this time to study God's Word. Okay, and times, the second coming, this I believe is the fourth message in a series of messages that I have been sharing with you regarding the second coming from the book of First Thessalonians, no? By way of recap, uh, I think the first message I gave in this series was the comfort of the second coming. The second was uh, how not to prepare for the second coming. Uh, third was uh, how to prepare for the second coming. And finally, today, today this morning, we will be studying about how to be protected from the second coming. Okay? That's the title of our uh, message for this morning. It might surprise you, but this is the title. Protected. How to be protected from the second coming. And as I said, it might sound surprising because uh, as Christians, we of course do not think of the second coming as something to be protected from. But actually, if we are not prepared, it is something that we need to be protected from. From and we will be studying only one verse, okay, this uh, morning, and it will be found. It's found in First Thessalonians, chapter five, verse eight. Protected for the second coming, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse eight. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. In other translations, uh, this reads, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the hope of salvation. May God uh, bless our study of His Word. May He work in our hearts to bless us and to change us. May His Word be fruitful in our lives even as we study what His Word means by means of the power of the Holy Spirit. To Him be all the glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so as I said, you might be wondering about the title. And the question to us is, what do we need protect protecting uh, from why do we need to be protected by the armor of faith and love and by the way i'd like to point out no ini balang armor nene uh, in the other translations it's a uh, breastplate no and helmet these are defensive pieces of armor they're not offensive unlike ya sang sword or espada that's offensive but this one is defensive you wear it in order to protect yourself, no? Helmet ka breastplate. Ang breastplate protects the heart and the lungs. Ang helmet protects uh, the head. So these are vital, defensive pieces of armor. What do we need protecting from? That's the question, no? So protected from what? And the clue is, okay, the clue is in the next verse. Okay? Okay, you know what? Iniba lang... Uh, when Paul mentions about the armor of God, immediately what comes to mind, if uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, the teaching of the Bible on spiritual warfare, what comes to mind is Ephesians chapter 6, right? About 
We wrestle not against flesh and blood, therefore put on the whole armor of God. Okay, so when we read about the armor of God, that is what we remember. It's about fighting spiritual enemies. Pero, diriya sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 lain, there is no mention of an enemy. Kag wala mention sa offensive pieces of armor. What is mentioned are defensive pieces of armor. So, what is this protection from? And the answer, as I said, the clue is in 1 Thessalonians 5.9. The next verse, okay, kundi verse 8, ang verse 9 says, and notice the word for, huh? because that means this is a continuation. Ang bal ni Paul, sa verse 8, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of the hope of salvation. For, God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ not to pour out His anger on us. Put on the armor because it is not God's intention to pour out His wrath upon you. So what is the armor for? Here is the answer. The armor is to protect us from the wrath of God. So la in Nishaya Ephesians 6, huh? we are not talking about spiritual warfare. We are talking about God's judgment on the wicked when the Lord returns. And there are supporting verses regarding this. Pero amunang main point, huh? please Please remember that this armor of God breastplate is defensive. It's meant to protect us, not from spiritual enemies. This is not about spiritual warfare, but from the wrath of God. Kaya rin hambal sing Bible, oh. But God shows His anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Ang isa ka butang ka ng lanon, maintindihan natin, because... You know, the teaching that God is love is very popular, di ba? Of course, God is love. We believe that. But the thing that many people forget is that God is also holy. God is also righteous. Today, He's very, pres- uh, He's very patient. At present, okay, nagahatag siya sa time and space for people to repent. That is why He does not pour out His wrath full force. But the time will come. The time will come when that patience will be at an end. Ginatagaan kita sa ginoo, opportunity to repent. But someday, that opportunity will be no more. The Lord Jesus will return and God will unleash His wrath on those who have refused to repent. Parang nga, balsang Bible, and they speak of how you are looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. For Christians, for those who are prepared, for those who love the Lord Jesus Christ and His second coming, it will be a time of great joy, of course. But for those who have not repented, for those who have insisted on living in their wicked ways, terror. Grabe, no? Ang, ang kwan giliya, ang second coming is something to look forward to if you're prepared and protected. But if not, you are expecting terror. That is what you will be expecting. Something to be afraid of instead of something to look forward to. Aring hambal sang Malakai chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. Ah. For behold, the day is coming burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evil doers will be stable. In other words, sunugon gid sila ya to such an extent, ang mabili niya, stable na lang kag-ashes. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither rot nor branch. In other words, consume gid ya, ubos-ubos gid niya nga pag-silot uh, sa ginoo sa tanan nga hindi maginulsol. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. In Ian Nami, for those who are prepared, you shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. The second coming is a day of great joy for those who are prepared, but a day of great terror for those who have not repented. Let us be clear about that. That is what people need to be protected from during 
the time that the Lord returns, they need to be protected from the righteous, holy, just wrath of God. It is only right for God to pour out His wrath someday, full force on those who have not repented, on those who have rejected His Son. It is something to be afraid of, but it is righteous. It is right, since God is a holy God, and He will not tolerate the sinful ways of mankind. Okay? What kind of armor is this? I have already mentioned this. The, the armor is defensive. Breastplate, helmet. Breastplate protects the lungs and the heart. Helmet protects the head. Mga kung ginaya, crucial, ginaya nga parts ng body, kung amo na yan maiguan, ti laban-laban, patay ka ganyan. So, these are, in mention ko, I use the word vital. These are vital, crucial pieces of defensive armor intended for protection. Okay, ari subong ang question. How does this armor protect us? Please note, ha? breastplate of faith and love and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Ang question subong amune, ha? Question. How does this armor, faith, hope, and love, protect us from the wrath of God? In fact, the whole message this morning is intended to answer this question. Ano ning protection nga ginaistoryahan? Ang yabi to understanding this, because you know, my role and my task as an expository preacher is that I will really bring out what God's word means. The key to understanding this protection is in the words, putting on faith and love as a breastplate. Medyo technical ni, pero I will have to ask for your careful attention para maintindihan ta. According to my research, ining words nga putting on, in the Greek, this is in the aorist tense. Some, you, some of you might not be familiar with what that means. But it simply means that it is an act that is once and for all and non-repeatable. In other words, ang pagsuksok sang ining armor, you do it only once. You don't repeat it again and again. That's what the word putting on means. When you do this decisive, once and for all act, then you're protected. And you know what? I think you will agree with me. When I think about this, the only thing that comes to mind which is which truly protects our souls and is a once and for all act which you never repeat. Ano sa inyo? Ano ka sulod sa mind nyo? It's the act of receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's your salvation experience. Ina yan non repeatable. You do you do not you do not receive the Lord Jesus Christ again and again and again. You only receive him once and if it's sincere, if it's true, you're saved. You're protected. So, grabe, ang, ang pagkaintindi ko de, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of, of salvation, it's a one-time act, non-repeatable, referring to your salvation, conversion, experience. The time when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And ini, summary na ni actually, ng simplification na ni actually, the best way, I've been saying this again and again, the best way to prepare for the second coming is to make sure that you are saved. Magsiling ka nga, put on once and for all, faith and love and hope, it's equivalent to saying, it's equivalent to saying, make sure you're saved, be saved. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all, do it truly and sincerely, and then you're protected. That's what it means. Ang yab, there, there's a clue here, no? that supports this interpretation. The word salvation. Diri mismo sa ining a verse. The hope of salvation as a helmet. In other words, it's talking about salvation. Okay, ari pagid, isa ka verse. In order to further support that. Okay? Balik kita sa 1 Thessalonians 1, 3 to 5. Ining 1 Thessalonians 3 to 5, very interesting, because faith, hope, and love are also mentioned. Okay? Previous chapters niya, subong niya ari kita sa chapter 5. Iniya chapter 1. Sa chapter 1 pa lang, ginmensyon na ang faith, hope, and love. Look at this. Let's read this. 
We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope. So, ara. Ang ara sa chapter 5, ari man di sa chapter 1. But take note of the context. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that He has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. In other words, Paul is saying, I am sure that you are saved. I am sure God has chosen you. Mga luwas ka mo. Nga nagambal ko nga mga luwas ka mo. Why, why do I have this confidence that you're saved? Because of the characteristics that you are manifesting. You receive the word with deep conviction. Tapos your life exhibits faith, love, and hope. Kitaan yung connection. The mere fact na ang kabuhi mo puno sa pagtuo, gugma, kagpaglaon, is evidence that you are saved. A saved person is a person who has faith, hope, and love. And that is what protects him. In a general answer to the question, how does faith, hope, and love protect you? It protects you because if you have that, you're saved. You're saved. Kasi implicit sa bat. But we will expound it more carefully in detail. But I hope that that is clear. Huh? Faith, hope, and love, you put it once. It's not repeatable, although it will continue to be manifested in your life. Pero may ara, na yan, decisive turning point in a person's life wherein he becomes protected. When you're saved, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you put your faith in Him. As a result, your heart is full of love to Him. And as a further result, you have hope and confidence nga, if I die, I will go to heaven. And if He returns, I will be with Him. Na, that is what we are talking about. The once and for all salvation experience. That is the putting on of the armor which protects us for the second coming. So, pwede na kuguro maguntap. Nasabat ko ng question. That is all we intend to do. Answer the question. Pero hindi tada maguntap. Because it goes deeper than that. We will now have to analyze that in detail. And what we intend to do is this. Okay? We intend to answer the questions. How does faith protect, protect us from God's righteous anger? How does love protect us from God's righteous anger? How does hope protect us from God's righteous anger? Okay, number one. How does faith protect us from God's righteous anger? Sa NLT, sa New Living Translation, wala nagwa ang word nga breastplate. Kaya hambal niya da, protected by the armor. Pero in other translations, gin nagwa gidya nga, we must put on the breastplate of faith and love. Now, what is interesting is this, Arya. We are trying to answer the question, how does faith protect us from God's righteous anger? Sa parallel verse ng Ephesians 6 to 14, the breastplate is not called the breastplate of faith. It's called the breastplate of righteousness. Okay. Diri naman niya sa Isaiah 59:17, which is clearly ah, the, the verse which inspired Paul when he wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, ang nakabutang mo ni, he put on righteousness like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. Okay, what is the point I am driving at? The point I am driving at is faith protects us from the second, uh, from the wrath of God because faith makes us righteous in Christ. Kabalo na kita sini. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, He is he makes us righteous. He covers us with His righteousness, righteousness so much so that when God pours out His wrath on the unrighteous, hindi kita madala kaysa matasang ino o righteous kita ya. Of course, of course we are sinners in, our, in and of ourselves. Pero kung magtuo ka kay Kristo Jesus, natabunan ka sa righteousness ni Jesus Christ. Kag ang makitaan sa ginoo, hindi iyang imo kasalanan, kundi ang pagkabalaan ni Kristo. And just like the angel of death in the Old Testament during the time of Exodus, 
pagkakita sa angel of death na ang dugo sa lam at tuto na sa doorpost sa balay, the angel of death passed by. Wala niya ginhilaptan. So, how does faith protect us from God's righteous anger? Faith protects us by covering us with the perfect righteousness of Christ. Ari nga, balsang Bible, ha? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, in the gospel, kung i the gospel of Jesus Christ, kung ibutang mong pagtuo mo sa maayong balita nga si Kristo Jesus nangin matay sa krus para sa imo, what happens? In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. By faith, when you put on the breastplate of faith, you obtain the righteousness of Christ which protects you. Kailan tawa ang next verse, kundi ginbasa ta, 16 and 17, verses 16 to 17. Tapos, amo na importante, magbasa ka Bible context, gide. Ang ginestoryahan, the righteous shall live by faith. Faith makes you righteous in Christ. Pero ang next verse, ara na naman ang 4. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodly, ungodliness and unrighteousness. Ang question ko, dala ka pa di? Hindi na. Hindi ka na yung mabubuan sa kaakig, kagkasingkal sa ginoo. Nga! Because this wrath of God is meant for the unrighteous. But if you have faith in Jesus Christ, you are righteous, therefore, you are protected. So, kita nyo ng sabat, ha? Ari ang sabat sa pamangkot. How does faith protect us from the righteous anger of God? Answer, faith protects us by covering us with the righteousness of Christ. Okay. But by His doing, you are in Christ Jesus who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. In Jeremiah 23, 6, the Bible says, The Lord is our righteousness. For our sake, He made Him to be seen who knew no sin so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Amuni bala ang miracle sa ginoo nga kataas gid katama. It's very deep, it's very profound. In and of ourselves, makasasala kita. We deserve God's righteous anger. But when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, in Christ, we are righteous. Hindi makitaan sa ginoo ang aton kasalanan. Kay natabunan kita sa righteousness ni Jesus Christ. Kag ang makitaan lang yan sa ginoo, ang pagkaputli, ang pagkabalaan, ang pagkamatarong sa aton ginoo, nga amunga si Kristo Jesus. Okay. So, hambalda, for our sake, He made Him to be seen, who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Are, 1 John 2, 1-2, to very important. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. Basi mamangkot ka mo, nga ako magtuo ka kay Kristo Jesus, hindi ka na pagbubuan sa ginoo sa iya kaakig. Why is it that God averts His wrath from you if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ? You know the answer is in this word. It's a very deep word. Propitiation. But this is what it means. Propitiation means averting the wrath of God by the offering of a gift. It refers to the turning away of the wrath of God as the just judgment of our sin by God's own provision of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Yes, God is angry at our sins. If we do not repent, He will pour out His wrath upon us on judgment day. But if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ paid for it already on the cross. Kag kung magtuo ka kay Kristo Jesus, ina nga payment ni Kristo Jesus is applied to you. And then you are covered by His blood. You are covered by His righteousness. And when God looks at you, I've been repeating this, when God looks at you, He has no more reason to be angry. Wala na si rason mga kid because it has already been paid by Jesus Christ 
on the cross. That is why His wrath is averted. Faith, okay, and result, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Ari pageda, John 5, 24 to 25. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Now look at this. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Tungod nagtuo ka kay Jesus Christ, hindi ka na paghukman. You are no longer condemned. But again, please take note of the context. Do not stop at verse 24. Proceed to verse 25. Kundi naghambal siya. Kung magtuo ka kay Kristo, you will no longer come into judgment. You have passed from death to life. But what is the context? The context is the second coming, the resurrection. Tihambal sa verse 25. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. The context is about the second coming. The best way to be protected from the wrath of God when Jesus Christ returns is to put your faith in Jesus Christ because faith protects us from the coming wrath by covering us with Christ's perfect righteousness. Now, okay, so we still have a lot of ground to cover. I will have to go a bit fast, okay? And so we have no, we go now to without further ado kanto na kita sa number 2. Kabalo na kita sang sabat sa how does faith protect us from the coming wrath. Ang um, ang second nga uh, ang, ang ang second question is how does love protect us from God's righteous anger. Now, bantayin ni bala, balik kita sa 1 Thessalonians 5:8. Since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love. Do you notice something? Do you not notice that faith and love are not separate pieces of armor? They are just one breastplate, one piece of armor. Wala siya naghambal na breastplate of faith and then love is something else. No, it is the breastplate of faith and love. In other words, faith and love are connected. They are one piece. They are one breastplate, not separate pieces of armor. Tiba si mamang kotano but si lingon si niman. Why is it that Paul did not separate love from faith when he talked about the breastplate? Here is the answer. Balik ka na naman sa First Thessalonians chapter one verse three. Aring hambal sa Bible. Remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love. Now, I would like to ask you, ining duha ka terms ni ni, is it not a fact that they are actually similar? Halos parihas. Ang, gin, ang naglain lang, faith kag love. But he talks of the work of faith and the labor of love. In other words, They're almost the same thing. And basimot, so ang, ang next na question is, what does this mean? Why is, why is there this connection and similarity between faith and love? So much so that it's called the work of faith and the labor of love. And here's the answer. The answer can be found in Galatians 5.6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. Are, are. Very important niya. Kung tutuod ka gidya nga nagtuo kay Kristo Isos, kag narealisar mo nga Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, hindi bala nga matunaw ang tagipusuon mo. Sang gugma sang ginoo, your heart will be so melted by the love of God for you in Christ Jesus that in response you will your heart will be full of love and gratitude to him that is the natural reaction hambalgan sa bible we love him because he first loved us and what will happen because your heart will be so full of love you will express that love in good works okay hambal sang john 1 john 3:16 verse 17 We know that real love is because Jesus gave up His life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. 
If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Let me explain this. Nagtuo ka git kay Christo Isos? Naintindihan mo git ang gugma sang ginoo? Nga git pakita niya tito sa cross? Sang nangin matay si Christo Christ Isos para sa atong kasalanan? Dapat ang resulta sina, a change will happen in your heart. Because you have experienced God's love, it will result in you being loving in return. And if you have experienced God's love, the Holy Spirit will pour out His love into your heart. And as a result, you will love others not only in word, but also in deed. In other words, your faith will work through love. In other words, love will produce good works. Bantayan yun ning 1 John 3:16 to 17 because I will show you a similar verse pero may dutay lang nga difference. That verse is James 2:14 to 17. Notice the similarity. Kag inaya, we are talking uh, John was talking about love. Diriya sa James, wala gin mention ni James ang word nga love. But in spite of that difference, the two passages are similar. Habal niya. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and you say goodbye, have a good day, stay warm, eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. As I said, ini nga passage similar sa sa 1 John. Ang ginlain lang, diriya wala gin mention ang love. Ang gin emphasize works, pero they are similar, okay? Pero it is implied. Implied na na nga diri sa James, this person expresses his faith by doing good works because of the love that his faith produces. Okay? So, balik kita. Be- before it becomes confusing, balik kita na isa pamangkot. How does love protect you from God's righteous anger? Kabalo na kita nga faith protects us because it covers us with the righteousness of Christ. Pero pamangkot na muna. How do you know that your faith is true? How do you know that your faith is genuine? Teka, kos magambal nga may, pe- may pagtuo ko yan. The proof that you have faith which protects you, is love, which expresses itself through good works. Amunin yung connection sa James kag 1 John. 1 John is talking about love, which produces good works. Diri naman niya, James is talking about faith, which produces good works. And we go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, nga point out ko ang similarities ng work of love and labor of faith. Kuha nyo na? Kuha nyo na? Di ba lang kagina, nagambal ko, na-notice nyo, 1 Thessalonians 1.3, work of love, the son, ah, de, work of faith, labor of love, the son, 1 John, ang nakabutang to, love produces good works. Ah, yes, love produces good works. Diri naman niya, faith produces good works. They are all in one piece. May harmony. Kag diri subong, okay, diri mo na subong maintindihan why the breastplate is the breastplate of faith and love. Wala din separate pieces of armor. Isa lang ka piece of armor. Because if you truly have faith, kung tutuod gidya nga protected ka because you have faith, that faith will produce works prompted by love. Which means, love protects you. Ha? How does love protect you from God's righteous anger? Love protects you by producing good works that prove the authenticity of your faith. Okay, ha? Ah, Aret, bantayan tanit. Kagina, ginbasa ta ang John 5.24. Asta lang kita sa verse 25. Subong ya, basahon ko naging ang video na context. And please take note of some very important things. Kundi ang bal niya, I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins but have already passed from death into life. Okay, we know that. Then, naghambal ako ang context ni Second Coming, Resurrection. 
And I assure you that, at the, that the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. The Father has life in himself, and, and he has granted that same life-giving power to his Son. And he has given him authority to judge everyone because he is the Son of Man. Okay. Don't be so, so surprised. Indeed, the time is coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of the Son of God and they will rise again. And now, bantayin eh, bantayin. Kagina, naghambal siya. If you believe, you will no longer be condemned. Pero subong naghambal siya. Jesus niya, Jesus niya gahambal. Those who have done good will rise to experience eternal life. Diba, si mamang kuta? Diba lang naghambal, naghambal, nag ito siya, yan nga, Mag, mag-believe lang ko, may faith lang ko. Hindi na ko, I will not be condemned. I have passed from judgment to life. The son of ham. Di, ano ning buot si lingon sini? Nga it is those who have done good will rise to experience eternal life. We have to reconcile this. Okay, klaruon ta lang. We do not believe that salvation is by good works. Why ta na Kay it is Jesus Christ who paid Uh, for our sins on the cross, hindi kita. Dapat all the glory should go to Him alone. We are saved by faith alone and not by works. Amo ng hambal sa Ephesians 2. Pero, balik kita sa hambal ni James. Balik kita sa hambal ni James. How do you know that a person has faith if it does not, you know, produce love that produces good works? Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds, but I say, How can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. Yes, we are saved by faith alone. Faith protects us. But how do we know that that faith is true if it does not produce love that produces good works? Kung ang imo pagtuo, wala dala gugma nga nagahimo sang maayo, ina nga pagtuo patay. That's what James is saying. So, how does love protect you? It protects you by proving your faith. Ang faith mo protects you by making you righteous in Christ. But your love protects you by proving nga may pagtuo ka din. That, that is the connection. And that is also the reason why they are one piece of armor, not two separate pieces of armor. Kay konektado gin sila yan. They're inseparable. You cannot have one without the other. So, ang tao nga nagahambal nga may pagtuo siya pero wala siya gugma nga nagahimo sang mayo he's not saved he's not protected for the simple reason that he does not have faith in the first place otherwise kung may faith siya dapat nagwa ginaya sa iya buhat amo nang hambal sing Ephesians 2:8:10 oh pero di ba lang Ephesians 2:8:10 nagatudlo ang salvation hindi iya by works that's true but read it completely for by grace you have been saved through faith This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works. Okay, claro tada. Not a result of works so that no one may boast. But verse 10 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Si Paul mismo nagatudlo by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This is God's word. Yes, you are saved by faith alone. Pero kung safe ka, syempre baguhon sang, kab- sang inuo ang kabuhi mo. Faith is supposed to change you. And if God changes you, what will be the result? You will do good works. Very clear. So kung wala, are, kung wala gugma, wala may yung buhat, pragana yan na lang, hindi ka luwas. Hindi ka, habi ko luwas ko pagi sa pagtuo. Wala ka pagtuo. <laughs> ang pagtuo mo, kuwan lang, intelektual lang, wala di. Pag nga nakambal kasi na, eh wala buhat. Faith without works is dead. If you are truly saved by faith alone, you're a new creature. And that means, there should be good works. Now, so how does love protect us? Love protects us by producing works that authenticate our faith. Okay, and finally, Finally, okay? Sorry if I'm going fast, but uh, we have a lot of ground to cover. Ari naman, ari naman lang kita sa last point, but, uh, but I really had to go fast. Okay? We had a lot of verses to cover. Finally, how does hope protect us? So, balik naman kita sa 1 Thessalonians 1 to 3. Ang muna ni ang helmet of the hope of salvation. Hambal dira, 
we remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Are. Hope protects you for the second coming by inspiring you to endure. Nay pa deni. Ato, uh, nay pa brad deni. Sti ba lang salvation by faith alone? Ti, ano nang gina... Kinangla noon pag idali mag-endure? Wait a bit. I will explain that. Ini, laba-laba lang, but I will have to read this, no? And read it with me carefully. This is Matthew 24. This is about the second coming. Si Jesus Christ ni siya ang nagatudlo. Take note, okay, is, and times naman lang gidang inistoryahan, lang to ang hambal ni Jesus. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. They will lead many astray. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Pero hindi, that's not yet the end. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation, put you to death. You will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Then, arena, arena, many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead men astray. And because loneliness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Huh? Pero subong pa lang mahatag lang ko question ha. I will show later on that endurance is not a condition for salvation. But it is necessary in order to be saved. Na medyo paradoxical. I will explain that later. But for now, just read this. The one who endures to the end will be saved. I will try to reconcile that later with the teaching that faith is by, and I mean, salvation is by grace through faith alone. Gapati, gito na But at the same time, the one who endures to the end will be saved. Kinanglan ma-endure git kita ya. If you want to be saved, you must endure. If you don't endure, you will not be saved. Prangkanay na lang. Karoon na lang ng reconciliation. Kaya I know some of you are confused. You do not, uh, you're probably wondering how I can reconcile salvation by faith alone with enduring to the end. Pero nga, ba, aring ang balas ng Bible. In Ia 2 Timothy 2.12, uh, si Paul is saying, very clear, uh, connected din niya sa ginbasa, ta sa Matthew 24. If we endure, we will also reign with Him. If we deny Him, we also will deny us. Ining deny na ini is the opposite of enduring. Parallel ni sila mo. Ang isa ya positive, ang isa negative. Kundi ang balya, if we endure, we will reign with Him. In other words, we will be saved. We will be with Him at the second coming. But if we deny Him, meaning we don't endure, ay parallel man lang ni sila, He also will deny us. Tay pa, pa. Ano ang meaning sining deny na ni man? Di bala si, Jesus, si Peter nag-deny man to siya? Di, naluwas man to siya kaya po now. That's not the kind of, of, uh, of denying that we're to talking about, ha? Ang denial dere is a final and complete denial of Jesus Christ. Ang buot silingon, puno, nagbaton ka kay Christ Jesus. Then, apis ang tanan, Christian ka. Pero paglambot sa punta, nagtalikod ka gidya, permanently, nga wala na balik-balik, there are some Christians who are like that. And, according to what the Bible is saying, ang ina nga tawo, hindi duwas. Okay. Nga nagabal ko sina, because of Matthew 4, 16 to 17. These are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. Nagbaton sila, oh, kita nyo? They not only receive it, but they receive it with joy. Pero ano natabo? Ano natabo sa punta? Did they endure? They have no root in themselves. They endured for a while. Temporarily lang. Then, when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. Wala sila nag endure, nag fall away sila. They denied the Lord Jesus Christ, they turned away from Christ. Is this person saved? The answer is 
no. Very clear. Matthew 7, titi, napadalingin. Basi may mamangkot, basi may mamangkot. At nang Brad Dennis, daw heresy na nang ginatudlo mo haw, di balaga pati kita na nga ang kaluwasan kung nabaton mo na na hindi ginayamadula? Yes, I believe that. I believe that a person, if he is truly saved, he is saved forever. Hindi kong to, kung nga muna, brother Dennis, nga naghahambal ka nga to endure to the end will be saved. Though, though pamat, pamatyagan ko, ining ginabasa mo nga mga versikulo, nagatudlo nga ang kaluwasan, pwede madula. No. This verse is saying that a person who does not endure will not be saved. That's true. But it is not saying that you can lose your salvation. Nga nagambal ko sina. Because there is a passage in the Bible which shows us Jesus denying certain people. This will explain what it means for Christ to deny some people. Aring hambal niya. Matthew 7, 21-23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. The one who does the will of, of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? So, to the outward eye, they're Christians, ha? Mga kuwan paniganin sila, grabe ka-active sa church. Mga <laughs> possible ministers pa ni sila, kay they cast out demons in your name. Do many mighty works in your name. They were doing things for Christ. Pero anong hambal ni Jesus Christ? I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. In other words, these are the people whom Christ denied. Tugol lang nabasa, takagin ha? If they deny me, I will also deny them. Pero ari ang crucial nga statement. I never knew you. Did these people lose their salvation? Were they were they saved? Then later on, because they turned away, they lost their salvation. No, they were. Oh, I'm sorry. They were never saved in the first place. Kay wala naghambal, wala naghambal si Jesus nga, I knew you before, I do not know you now. Hindi na mong ginambal ni Jesus, ang hambal ni Jesus, I never knew you. So, klaruhon ta lang. Ang isa ka tao, nga may aras ang ginatawag, temporary faith lang, puno nagbaton siya kay Kristo, pero wala siya nagpadayon, sa puntas ang iya kabuhi, tumalikod siya permanently and finally, he did not lose his salvation. Ah, his salvation. Are, are we clear on that? He did not lose his salvation. He was never saved in the first place. Kay hampal ni Jesus, I never knew you. From the very beginning, hindi na kita yakilala. Okay. So, I do not believe that salvation can be lost. But I do believe that if a person is truly saved, he will endure. It is impossible. Li listen to this, please. Listen to this. It is a. It is impossible for a true Christian not to endure. But uh, yano to? It is impossible for a true Christian not to endure. Yes, ma backslide siya kisa. Yes, mas tambol siya kisa. Yes, mahulog siya kisa. But if he's a true Christian, the Spirit of God is in him. God will never leave him nor forsake him. Every time nga matumba siya, he will arise. He will rise up again and he will go on until he reaches the finish line. Kay luwas siya. Amuna ang karakteristik sa tutuod nga luwas. Okay, so kagina naghambal ko. Endurance is necessary for salvation. But it is not a condition for salvation. It is an Listen to this, it is an inevitable characteristic of those who are saved. Liwat on ka, one last time, one last time. Endurance is not a condition for salvation. What is it? It is an inevitable characteristic of those who are saved. You are not saved by your endurance. You are saved by your faith in Jesus Christ. But if your faith is true, it will produce good works and it will endure. It's not temporary. Na. Amo na siyang reconciliation nga ginestoryahan ta kagina. So ang next na question, we're about to end. So a little patience please. Balik naman kita sa hope. 
na intindihan na natin nga ini galing endurance necessary ni it might not be a condition for salvation but it's a proof that I am really I'm really safe kung totoo ng pagtuo ko may endure gid pugali niya okay how does hope inspire endurance amo naman ang sabdonta before we end lapit na lang ha? hambal sa philippians 1:6 I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Okay. Ini pa lang word nga hope. Sa English, it's a bit misleading. Because in English, in the English language, when you use the word hope, you are talking about something that might happen or might not happen. That's hope in English. But in the original New Testament Greek, ang word nga hope means something certain. It will really happen. That is why in Philippians 1.6, ang humble ni Paul, I am confident, I am certain, nga God who began a good work in you will finish it on the day when Christ Jesus returns. And Paul is teaching us, the Bible is teaching us, the Holy Spirit is teaching us, kung nagtuo pag hindi kay Jesus Christ, hold on to, the, to that hope. Hindi pagbuiin ang hope nila. Believe that in God, that God is true to His promises and He has saved you and He will keep you safe up to the very end. Okay? So, eh, tandaan ka lang na ha, the hope that we are talking about is not an uncertain hope. It is a confident and certain hope. In fact, sa New Living Translation, ginbasa, takagina, ang, ang word nga hope is, uh, 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 is translated as the word confidence. Okay, so please take note of that. Next verse. Hebrews 6, 18-19. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. A hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. Ang ginatudlo sa Biblia, Amone, kung nagtuo ka gidya kay Christ Jesus, please know that God does not renege on His promises. God keeps His promises. God has promised, for God so loved the world that He began, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Kung tutuod git ang pagtuo mo, hold on to that because God cannot lie. Hold on to the hope of salvation, the certain hope, hindi ya uncertain, the, the certain hope of salvation because God cannot lie. Hold on to that and what will be the result? 1 Corinthians 15, 57-58 Kung dapati ka gadya, nga, nga luwas ka gadya, kay nagtuo ka kay Kristo Isos, kag makitan man ang bunga sa kabuhi mo, hold on to the hope. It will inspire you to enjoy, to endure. Nga ha, hambal ni Paul, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. Tungod sigurado sila that there is victory, that in the end, they will truly be saved, that God will keep them safe up to the very, up to the very end, because they're confident about that. Ano ang resulta? Steadfast. Immovable. Sige ubra para sa ginoo. Persevering. Enduring. What inspired them? Hope. Maluwas kaya. Okay, I will end with this story. I just learned this recently. Nang, you're familiar with the Nazi concentration camps, no? Uh, I, I, I heard about this story. Nga, there were these prisoners sa isa ka Nazi concentration camp during World War II. Ki, syempre, kasubok it's ang kabuhi nila dito sa camp. Pero may isa ka tao to nga nakatago siya radyo. Then one day, one day, ha, one day, kundi depressed na to sila tanan. Despairing, discouraged na to sila tanan tungod sa treatment nila da sa Nazi concentration camp. One day, tago lang, secretly, they heard the news. The Allies, the Allies have won the war. Wala kabalo ang mga gwardiya. 
Pero sila yan ang batian nila. They heard the good news. The allies have won the war. Germany is defeated. Ginhipsan lang nila. Wala nila ginpanugid. Pero you know what the effect was? It gave them courage. It gave them the will to live and to survive because they heard the good news that it's just a matter of time. They are free. Germany has lost the war. The allies have won. And they were sure. They were confident. The allies are coming to liberate us. Kay nagdaog na. The victory has been won. Result? Courage. Steadfastness. Endurance. Will to survive. Will to live. Amunisya. Amunisya. If you are sure and confident that you are saved in Christ, Because your faith in Christ is true. You know that God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. He will complete the good work which He began in you. You will be full of courage. If you fall, you will arise. You will never give up. You will never give up. Because you have heard the good news of victory. Just like the prisoners in the Nyachi camp. The allies have won the war. The allies have won the war. We are liberated. It's just a matter of time. Amo mana sa aton. So how does hope protect you? Hope protects us by inspiring us to endure to the end. Summary. Faith protects us by covering us with Christ's righteousness. Love protects us by producing works that prove the authenticity of our faith. Hope protects us by inspiring us to persevere to the end. Take home. Do you want to be protected for the second coming? Confirm your faith in Christ. Cultivate your love for for Christ. Cling to your hope in Christ. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your wonderful word. Thank you, O Lord, that you have paid the penalty for all our sins. And because of that, O Lord, we can receive the free gift of salvation by faith alone in what you have accomplished for us. Thank you, O Lord, that by means of faith in you, we are protected because you have covered us with your righteousness. Thank you, O Lord, that you have poured out the spirit of love into our hearts so that we can produce good works that authenticate our faith. And thank you, O Lord, for your promise that you will complete the good work which you have begun in us. Please continue, O Lord, to nurture that hope in our hearts so that we will remain steadfast to the end and enjoy the wonderful blessedness we will have with you forever when you return for us. May you bless all of us, O Lord. May we all rejoice in you continually. May our worship, O Lord, be a delight to you because you are the one who deserves all the glory. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.